Hello, everybody. Welcome to Yes, Have Some Podcast. My name is Craig Goldberg, and I'm with you as always with my wonderful co-hosts, Abigail Gardner. What's up, y'all? Jacob Walsh. How's it going? Great. Thank you for asking. I got to ask you now. Yeah. We had a whole I thing. I feel bad. I, I, I told him. Oh, yeah. Our guest is here. Andres Hall. What's up, man? How are you? <laughs> hey, what up, gang? Uh, we had a thing recently where I, I, you know, we've been doing this for seven years, and I told them. When I say recently, this was like five minutes ago. Half an hour ago? Okay. Yeah. Okay. And I ago. said, nobody ever asks me how I'm doing. So mm. it's guilt tripping us. Yeah. yeah. And, you, and you need that. Yeah. Yeah. He's a it, human. It can help. Like, Feelings. it couldn't hurt. Right. <laughs> you know? yeah. uh, right. Let's, uh, let's talk. Anders, hey, man, I don't, know, I don't know how this happened. Let me tell you how this happened. This is why you're here. You, you've probably wondered, why are they asking me to do this? Somebody, I'm... We love what you do. Follow your career for a Thanks, long man. time. Thanks, you, man. You're, you're killing it. Workaholics. Everybody knows. You don't need an introduction. Our audience knows who you are. So that's great. But it came to my attention semi recently that you are like a Ghostbusters fan. And like everybody likes Ghostbusters, but somebody sent me a clip from, from your show. And mm -hmm. I think you were talking about Ghostbusters 2. You're making mm -hmm. a reference to it. Mm -hmm. And it was in a manner that I was like, oh no, he's like a real fan. Like this is deeper than the 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 common yeah. reference. It was it was a deep cut like Janos reference. And I was like, well, we should talk to you about yeah. that. Yeah. Is, is that correct? I mean, so it's yeah, yeah, yeah. And and I've heard someone else kind of cite this as well cuz I'm I'm 42 and I think that Ghostbusters 2 was like our Ghostbusters. Like yeah. it was the one that was a little more accessible. Yeah. Uh, you know, you see the first Ghostbusters, maybe you're a little too young. Uh, like, I don't think I saw it in the theater, but I remember like, as soon as it came on videotape, it was like something everyone's watching. But then when Ghostbusters 2 came out, I was just old enough to be like, oh boy, like, uh, <laughs> I get all the jokes now, all the innuendos are hitting hard. Right. You know, that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. Well, we're long on record saying that Ghostbusters 2 is and always will be the best Ghostbusters movie. Like, it's just, it's, it's, it's completely for sure underrated. Uh, mm -hmm. And the, the, I think maybe you can even rate it higher than the first one because of it, because it had to follow the first one, if that makes any sense. Yeah, it does. Impossible task to follow the first Ghostbusters. Right. And yet it, it pretty much did it. It wasn't like a new thing. So like you could you know, give it demerits there for that. But the way that it like introduced new cast members uh, also had like big set pieces that were iconic. Um, I'm a, I like the, the Bobby Brown song more than I like the Ray Parker Jr. Song. Call Same. me crazy. No, this we'll is, do it, the yeah, best. I agree. We talk about the soundtrack to Ghostbusters 2 more than we talk about anything else. It's probably yeah. the thing that loses us the most listeners. Just yeah. And the cameo. Yeah. Hey, Ghostbusters, let me get one of those proton packs from my kid brother. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, these are not a toy. You yeah. know, it's like, yeah, it's a beautiful thing. It is. And I remember as a kid, like somebody being like, hey, that was Bobby Brown. I was like, no, he did the song. That was somebody else, but I right. love this guy because, like, he's speaking for me. I want a proton pack for yeah. myself and my kid brother. Yeah. Um, but it is, you're right, though, because, like, we're all about the same age, right? Like, I'm born in 84. So, like, mm -hmm. Ghostbusters 2 comes out when I'm five. Mm -hmm. The the cartoon is, is at its peak. Okay. Let's do it. So, the cartoon, um, haunted. I, I, I pulled this out of the deep wrinkles of my brain the other day because. I noticed it was streaming, available on streaming. Yeah. Yeah. And I go, there was one episode that like legit scared the shit out of me. Yeah. Yeah. And I didn't know what it was. I couldn't remember it. I just remember like the face. Okay. And so I go through the titles and I stop at the boogeyman. Yep. And I go. <laughs> knew, knew you were going to say that. Yeah. I go, Close. I think this is it. And I turn it on. And I'm fast forwarding, I'm fast forwarding. And then I see this thing come out of the closet and it's still mm -hmm. terrifying. And I showed it to my wife and she's like, yeah, I don't know, whatever. I'm like, <laughs> yeah, but like no seven year old me is watching this and it's like in the girl's closet and like it like crossed doing a, like they brought kids into it in a way that was scary for the first time. Mm -hmm. uh, but that image of, 
this giant head with like the little body stuck yep. with me forever. Yeah. yeah. I think that's like kind of the, the thing. Yeah. Here we yeah. Go. This, mm -hmm. uh, about like the real Ghostbusters, like especially like the first two seasons, like it's an, it's a known thing. Like it's really well written, mm -hmm. like aimed at kids, but like legitimately scary. Like, yeah, yeah. They, like right. And there's that also happens a lot. Like as a kid, like it's not just like I remember like I saw Ernest Scared Stupid in theaters and it haunted yeah. me. I didn't rewatch that until like two years ago. I, yeah. I avoided it like my whole adult right. life. <laughs> or oh, Garbage Pail Kids Ernest. the movie. Garbage Pail Kids the movie was like. Off putting. Oh, yeah. It was like, ugh, oh. this is gross. Mm. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, it's just like, and like also, I mean, we knew somebody who was afraid of ET. It's like whatever like hits you at the right age, and like it might not affect anybody else. So right. like, so you were watching the cartoon. You were you were into it. Yeah, yeah, deep into it. You know, and I even like look. Dare I say I watched the other Ghostbusters cartoon? It had a gorilla. That's kind of fun, but it was very confusing for a young me. Yeah, filmations, Ghostbusters. Filmation. Yeah, because yeah. you're like, yeah. you don't like, you don't really understand channels yet no. when you're like seven. You just <laughs> go to the TV on Saturday morning and turn it on, and you're like, is this the same Ghostbusters I was watching? <laughs> <laughs> We're yeah. Slimer. Yeah, um, you and know, I'm the, sure yeah. you guys have gone over the guy who voiced Vankman on the cartoon. Lorenzo, and, yeah, Lorenzo music, yeah, yeah, and like their overlap because I believe he was also the voice of Garfield. Yeah, yeah. But then yeah. Bill Murray was the movie voice of Garfield. It's yeah. so weird. Have these mm -hmm. guys hung? Like, are they kicking it? <laughs> yeah. Do they go golfing together? Are they at the Bulls games? Like, what? So here's what fucked me up about Lorenzo music. So he he's passed away, unfortunately. But like I said, uh, I'm sure that they hung out before. <laughs> <laughs> Bill Murray yeah. killed him. He yeah. threw him off the. <laughs> He, he didn't, it he could only be one. It could only be one. Yeah. The thing, things have happened. Right. The thing, right, he stuffed him in a trash can. No, yeah. something else. The music uh, stopped. <laughs> the day Sorry. Lorenzo music stopped. Yeah. <laughs> Here's the thing. That guy was so protective. There's no interviews with him. There's like one clip. It is so off-putting yeah. to see uh -huh. Garfield's voice come out of this human man's face. What is he like? Uh, Slender man? Like, what, what does he look like? <laughs> I can it's get. Just, the, I got to get the clip up. Yeah, well, yeah. Is yeah. It like it's, a it's, it's human just puddle that like slithers into <laughs> rooms. <laughs> it's just I, the fact that that well, voice is like the most. Me. That's like the voice of your childhood when you it grew really up watching, mm -hmm. you know, Garfield and and real Ghostbusters, and then being so. Nowadays, you can just find videos of every single person doing their right. voices. Right. But seeing this guy for the first time is like it's like it does something with your internal makeup. You're like, what? yeah. Mm -hmm. What is he like? A, a white guy with dreadlocks? Is that what we're dealing with here? <laughs> you're not. That, well, I think that would break my heart the most. For your here's the thing. Oh. <laughs> By the way, the only reason remember earlier when I said uh, it's like rare to see these interviews. The only reason I said that is because this video I've watched like ten times before. It's labeled as rare. On mm -hmm. It's because it says right. YouTube right. Yeah. got you. They tricked yeah. you. That's him. Let me see if it plays the, the sound. Here. Yeah, this works. Prepare. I read some of the Garfield books. There were three at the time. And uh, I just realized that I understand this. Uh, see? Isn't that He's weird? not even doing anything. It's just his voice. <laughs> but, I mean, yeah. he does sound half asleep, right? <laughs> Every yeah. performance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I want to see his, his lasagna. Like, yeah. you know that, like, the producers of whoever worked with him, like, to his face, they were very, like, fun and kind. And then as soon as he left the room, they were like, this fucking sleepwalking moron <laughs> is going to make us millionaires. <laughs> yes. That's 100% what happened. You know? But, like, I want him to be my therapist or something. Just, like, soothing. Yeah. 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 That's the only way AI works out for everybody is if they just get this guy's voice on like Siri or whatever, right? To talk right. us to sleep, the calm but they app were, or something. What, what, That's what? it. Not yeah. Porno. All right. yeah, yeah, or like Pornhub. Yeah, one of those. So, uh, but look, those two things. Yeah. <laughs> Should we? Do we care? Do we want to hear any more? Yeah, of course. Mm -hmm. Cat, and uh, I am this cat. Music wrote the Bob Newhart show. He wrote Rhoda, and oh, he wow. became. See? We're oh, learning. so dude is a legend. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Semi-famous as Carlton Rhoda's drunken doorman. 
Music's done a lot of things, but he's never played a cat. They started laughing. I was just, it's one of those things that, you know. <laughs> so you see what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. So, Loret, but then the fucking, wow. they replaced him with Dave Coulier, like season three. Yes. Mm-hmm. And there's always yes. been rumors that it was because Bill Murray or somebody said, this is not Vinkman. I'm not right. going to do it. Mm-hmm. So bring in Joey Gladstone. There's no way. Bill Murray was on an island somewhere being like, there's a cartoon. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he didn't yeah. care. Yeah. In, cool. my, in my dumb fake history, I think Bill Murray was like keeping tabs on like the voice actors and what's going on. So yeah. yeah. But they, they replaced him for some reason. And then the show kind of went downhill. That makes sense. I think I remember that now. Mm-hmm. Kuye also just everywhere. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He's all over. Yeah. 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 Um, I mean, do we get into uh, America's Funniest Home Videos and how he was for sure the voice of the uh, Jackalope, right? Oh, yeah, 100%. Yeah. I'm right there yeah. with you there. Yeah. Wait, what? Process I remember. Fast as fast can do. I'll never catch me. Right? Yeah, oh, exactly. Oh, yeah, oh, oh, Jackalope. Oh. And then he just took the same voice and gave it to the beaver on, on Full House. Full yeah. House. But I was yeah. thinking of, remember, America's Funniest Home Videos comes out and then there's America's Funniest People. Which was the show yes. after it? Yes. It was, I always thought that was weird. Like they are they going to get John Stamos to do like the you know right the lead in for he also has like America's funniest musicians. I don't know. Right. Like, what? Hey, with the strike going on, you know yeah. it's coming out. <laughs> oh, America's funniest fill in the blank seven hours every night right here <laughs> on ABC, hosted by John Stamos and the remaining Beach Boys. Yeah, and unfortunately, <laughs> I'm watching. Yeah. Oh yeah, we're you know? in. We're in yeah. on that. Um, yeah, writer strike. That sucks, but it's great. Yeah, it's it a bummer, for, but it's, it's like a bummer, a, but it's a good thing. Sometimes you got to stand up to your dad and say, "Actually, Dad, I'm going to take the car out." Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. No, we're just uh, trying to make things right in this ever changing um, business of entertainment, where there's all sorts of new ways to make money. We're trying to be right there, getting our part. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so you should be. You should yeah. be. Remember, right? mm-hmm. you know what? Metallica did this and everybody got mad at them like 25 right. years ago. But right. they were right. Right. Yeah. They were. <laughs> it, it is crazy. It is crazy because uh, you you see the mentality of people who are like, you're rich. What do you care? And I go, I know I am. But I'm striking for all the people that aren't rich yet. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. For, the, for the little people. And the idea that you get a fair shake of what you're due, you know? And then there's a lot of people who, who criticize that, like, well, now that you've kind of made it, what, what do you care? And I'm like, you should always care. That's a you bad should always, to have. You should yeah. always yeah. care. Even if you're working at, um, let's say you're making uh, $85,000 a year uh, compared to somebody who's making 40, like the $85,000 a year guy should care even though he's making more than 40. And if you're making 40 and someone just got, uh, you know, a, a, a job making $25,000 a year, like the $40,000 a year should be sure. like, I want my due. Like it's mm-hmm. a principle. It's more of a principle yeah. than, um, you know, otherwise let's just go back to socialism. Let's just, let's like wipe the slate clean, do all live theater that no <laughs> one can see. And <laughs> right, uh, right. Yeah. we all get paid in rations of bread and cheese. Yeah, I mean, well, we're Let's not going to let that happen. For a year, we'll try it. We okay. are not going to let that happen. Perfect, thank you. Yeah, thank yeah. you. Um, no, I agree. And like with streaming, I mean, it's it's really about like, I mean, you you see people who are like, you know, staff writers on shows and they're like, hey, I can't afford my rent and I'm trying to get a second job at Target and mm-hmm. they won't even hire me. So it's just mm-hmm. like, it's not it's not the, the glitz and glamour. Yeah, uh, you got to know your worth and make your money. Yep. Fuck no. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's uh it's a it's 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 super complicated, guys. <laughs> Which is why it's gonna take a year. Uh but we'll see. We'll see. Mm-hmm. And then I don't want to get into this, but there's a actor strike looming as well. Oh yeah, but well, look, strength in numbers. I mean, like yeah. uh the act the d- directors are renegotiating in a month, I think, and then the actors are two months from now, something like that. Um but you know, look, we're also like super global, so they might just go, "Hey, man, fuck you." There's some pretty good shows coming out of Korea, and I don't disagree, right? Yeah. So they'll yeah. just air those, you know. Hey, you know what? Um, 
there's some good shows coming out of France or uh, South America or Mexico. Like, right, right. yeah, mm-hmm. there's good shows everywhere. So maybe we will just get steamrolled. Um, but the conversations being had and it's, it's, it's all, this is what happens. Mm-hmm. Damn. Yeah. How do we get from boogeyman to this? This is great. This is we, like, cause look, streaming industry. That's the boogeyman, right? <laughs> <laughs> and he's you in know, the closet and he's yeah. scaring me. Um, awesome. Yeah. No, well, I hope we don't, we can go back to being funny and stupid. No, let's, let's listen. We've been doing that for too long. People <laughs> need to start taking this really seriously. Yeah. Um, no, I think it's important. Like we all love our content. We love our, our movies and our shows. But yeah. like, mm-hmm. the, the, the creators and the, the actors and the writers who make it uh, deserve to, uh, to at least have their voice heard and say like, hey, this, it, it's really easy when you start looking at like the salaries of the, the leadership. At these for sure. The money is the money the money all across the board is crazy but like when you look at what the model is where it's like hey this thing i invented in my brain and wrote down mm-hmm. ended up being this thing called ghostbusters that's now been b- how many billions of dollars has right, the right. concept of ghostbusters made so you're telling me that um dan Aykroyd isn't do a pretty big slice of that pie you know sure. what i'm saying like come on what, what god are here? i would lo- We've never been able to get Dan on the show because he, um, for a lot of reasons, but one of the sure. main reasons is uh, he won't. He just won't he just do, doesn't it. do it. <laughs> he, but also, he doesn't use Zoom and doesn't have a cell phone and is just like out in the out. In yeah, the, he's chasing aliens and drinking yeah. crust, crystal skull or whatever. Exactly. Yeah, mm-hmm. but I he's earned that. And by the way, he's earned that. He's earned mm-hmm. it. And I would yeah, love to ask him about his fair piece of Ghostbusters. I would just love to. I would love to because once you get him going, Jake, you know he's going. You can't stop Dan Aykroyd once he gets going. It's yeah. the best thing about him so is just you guys have get him hung on. with him, but never had him on. We've hung. Yeah, we've right. hung. We, we've yeah. we've this uh, thing we do has brought us some like really cool opportunities. We got yeah. to meet and be around uh, Ivan Reitman and yeah, uh, you know uh, Jason Reitman. Jason Reitman, who's Everybody. super super Reitmans. dope. That's yeah. cool. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Hey, speaking of Jason Reitman, they're making a new movie right now. Yeah. Anders, what, where, where are we on Afterlife? Because I think that was another thing I heard. Okay, let's let's reel it back a little bit. Yeah. Pandemic happens. The movie keeps getting delayed. We are all in the camp of we've been waiting for, you know, the, the third chapter of Ghostbusters our mm-hmm. whole life. Like, I always mm-hmm. tell the story about tele, you know, first time listener. Right. Mm-hmm. AOL, day one, 1996. Okay. Get my screen name. Get my member profile set up. Sick. First ASL. Day. ASL. Yep, ASL, Craig, 12, <laughs> Georgia. I'm looking, Ghostbusters 3, is it happening? It's the first thing I searched on the Yeah, internet. yeah, yeah, yeah. And since then, that's that's like my all-time search. And yeah. so when Afterlife was finally going to happen, it was a really huge deal for us. It was like emotional. And and, and that, that was another couple of clips people sent me of your show you talking about like this build up to afterlife and, and your excitement for it. So, uh, yeah, let's, let's totally delivered. Fuck. To- totally. So delivered. good. And like, didn't I like, I don't watch trailers anymore or I try if I'm, if I'm no, I'm not going to see a movie. I'll watch the trailer. Uh, if I know okay. I want to see the movie, I do not watch trailers. I show up at movies late. Uh, I avoid them. They are trash. They ruin movies. Uh, they also make you see movies that suck because the trailers are good. <laughs> <laughs> I've done uh, it. It's just become such a science where it's like, we do this, we do that, and uh, you're going to think the movie's pretty cool. Um, they shoot scenes for trailers now, like that yep. don't exist in the movie. Yeah. Um, and they they give away the biggest hooks in all these movies now, and yeah. it blows my fucking mind. And I understand it, but. Uh, and also, like in making my own movies, they're always just like the but. Like I'm like, oh, do we want to save that joke? That's kind of tied to something. And they're like, the funniest stuff needs to go in the trailer. Nobody cares. Like, just get butts in the seats. And right. I'm like, all right. I mean, I guess there's a fair in the stuff I've made. There's a fair bit that you can't show in trailers anyway. Right. Um, but like, I always hate going to a movie and seeing the biggest laugh from the trailer again. Yeah, because yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. So, so anyway, um, I went into it 
blind and i think i took my oldest That's kid <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> that you were able to do that yeah, just that, that you were able it, it's it's unthinkable for me going into afterlife blind especially because we do this show but i just wonder what it would have been like i would not have been able to concentrate going in i wasn't blind. i wasn't um i knew i didn't like when paul rudd jumped out i was like paul rudd's in this movie sick love paul rudd <laughs> right right Dude, you yeah, know I'm but like i wasn't following it super close i knew it was going to be like kids um and i, I knew it was going to be like the granddaughter of uh egon right but right. Mm-hmm. but god damn if that <laughs> end scene where egon is back yeah, yeah. didn't wreck me in that movie theater oh yeah and i like and i look at my kid i'm just like <laughs> grab his neck i'm like yeah. little buddy we're here together <laughs> yeah we're doing it <laughs> Uh, they did it so right, and like, I'm a huge, um, I'm a huge uh, just fan of Harold Ramis as like right. a creator. Mm. Like, yeah. I always yeah. saw myself. I know I don't like look like him or whatever, but I always saw myself as more of a Harold Ramis guy than a Bill Murray guy or a Dan Aykroyd guy, even. But like. Uh, I just, he's, he's made some amazing movies. He's been parts and, uh, as an actor of amazing movies, he's written amazing movies. Um, and so just like to bring him back in that way and to have everybody sign off, I was like, this is fucking legit, you yeah. know, and not it's, forced. And yeah. it's, it felt less commercial than like the Ghostbusters with Kristen, Kristen Wiig um and those guys which like fuck like sony take take your time it's already been 20 years before you make it you've got an astounding cast don't make somebody write a movie in 10 minutes and then like shove it out for a launch date it's yeah. gonna do fine no matter when you release it take the time like don't we force just- it this movie was not forced at all it felt like organically what was supposed to happen mm-hmm. we've talked about both of those concepts a lot um We've often said Afterlife was like the least likely in like the way modern studio franchises Legacy are run. Movies. Yeah, right. yeah. Like it, it to have feels, a small personal indie type of movie is that was so unexpected. Yeah, mm-hmm. and we were like, we we you know we saw the trailers and stuff, but we did stay spoiler free. And we had always wondered, like you know, if if they're tempted to bring back Egon as a ghost, like there's just so many ways that to could fuck go it up. Yeah, so wrong. Right. Right. So the fact that they nailed it was, yeah, it it was emotional uh, terrorism. But, <laughs> dude, I mean, even when um, when Janine, yeah, 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 is showing the house and says, uh, "Fuck, I can't remember the line right now," but she she says a line from the OG Ghostbusters. Yeah, and I was just like, <laughs> "Yeah, yeah." Well, because. What is happening? Right. And it's like we've, I mean, are you, I'm assuming if, listen, if you like Ghostbusters, I'm sure you have other fandoms, other movies. I'm sure you like Star Wars and, and things of that nature. No. But like, no, you don't. No, oh, it's weird when it's, guy. that's yeah. good. But good for you. Like, yeah. It's, <laughs> yeah. It's hey, I'm I, I always felt like, I felt like Star Wars. <laughs> so, yeah, like, again, fun. my age group, I felt like Star Wars was put upon my oh, age. Yeah. Yeah. By, okay. by elders. Yeah. Right. And I was like, this isn't mine. This okay. is yours. And then when it came out, I guess my like in high school, I was in high school when the episode one came out. Right, right. Mm-hmm. And it was like back. I was like not part of the fanfare. I just didn't care. I went and saw it and thought it was pretty cool. Um, but I just wasn't about that life. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You went home and searched when is Ghostbusters 3 coming out. That's, that's right. What, that's what I did. Mm-hmm. That's right. Um, hey, what I so I looked at your Wikipedia. Oh, I only read the first two lines, but look, when I wrote that, I was drunk. I can listen. <laughs> we, I have edit access if you need. Yeah. You're from Evanston, Illinois. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I am not, but I am from Highland Park, Illinois. Which oh, is right on, right around the corner, which is where Harold Ramis lived. He did. Well, my claim to frame going uh, growing up was uh, I was born in the same hospital as Fred Savage. I would literally tell people that. <laughs> All right, because <laughs> Fred is from Wheeling. Yeah, I think. And by the way, he might no idea if he was born in Highland Park Hospital, but I just I was like in the area. It's a main hospital. Yeah, that was what you decided to tell. But you made that up. That was your thing. 
that was my cool. thing. Like some people yeah. come in and they're like, I get it. Fred's my dad's there. in the CIA. Right. Where there was always a kid who's like, Hey, don't tell anybody, but you know, I've got a PS six. Mm-hmm. Neo Geo. <laughs> yeah, sure. yeah, 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 yeah. And it's like you're just fucking lying. Right. Mine was I was born in the same hospital as Fred Savage. But yeah. this is a long way to get around to Bill Murray is from Evanston, Illinois. I think he was born there. I think he grew right. up in Wilmette, which is just a, a suburb over, but very close. Gotcha. Um and like, yeah, like that whole era of like 80s Chicago, like second city actors and all that. Uh, and even like John Hughes movies, it was like just fucking kind of weird to be like, oh yeah, this is Lakeshore Drive. This is where I drive around. Like, this right, is, right. All these houses look familiar. They were filming, they filmed uh, like my uncle's house was in Uncle Buck. Um, oh. And my buddies, uh, this other girl I knew, like they filmed uh, Dennis the Menace at her house. Like there's a lot of stuff going on that made right. it very kind of like, oh, movies yeah. get made by people. That's so interesting. And yeah, that's that's always the cool part going back up there. Is like we finally went and saw the Home Alone house, which is crazy because right. it's right. just like, you know, it's just on some normal ass street. It's yeah. just like, it's the it's Home Alone there. house. Just but yeah, like living. just being a legend. Yes. Yeah. 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 They put up a gate though. See, there was no gate. Honestly, they should have. Can you imagine that. the fucking people taking selfies oh. in the oh, last 10 years? We were some of those people uh, yeah, we did. Uh, like us, when we us. went. <laughs> yeah. But Trump, it was yeah. like during, uh, right before Christmas time. So yeah, it was cool. It was really right. nice. Christmas. But yeah, but yeah. like Uncle Buck, all the John Hughes stuff, like there, yeah. there's something in that area of the country and the, those north, you know, shore of Chicago suburbs specifically mm-hmm. that is just, uh, it's just, there's something good. And then Groundhog Day was in Woodstock, Illinois. There's 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 good uh, mm-hmm. comedy blood coming from that part of the country. Yeah, there was a lot of stuff. And then I I had to I I take umbrage. I think oh. is that what people take mm-hmm. uh, right. with T- Tina Fey set uh, Mean Girls in Evanston. Yeah, and there were like people with like Escalades, and that was just absolutely <laughs> not the vibe. Mm-hmm. Uh, right. Anybody oh. who could afford an Escalade did not drive that to uh, school. It just wasn't it was more like hippy dippy if people had money they were they were like rich hippies kind of Mm -hmm. i remember seeing it and i remember they make a reference what's that outdoor mall there's like an old orchard old orchard they said we're gonna go to old orchard i remember yeah oh i've i know that yeah yeah i I whispered to the guy next to me i was like fred savage same hospital yeah no big deal (laughs) by the way for anybody listening old orchard is an outdoor mall in the northern suburbs of chicago (laughs) Where so it, flea market? It, where <laughs> no, but like where it's enjoyable for like three months of the year, and then it's just freezing, and you're <laughs> yeah. walking down this like yeah. essentially like this wind tunnel <laughs> out yeah. of I don't yeah. know what to get to like J Crew and get some fucking chinos right, or whatever. Right. It's like it looks like Jack Nicholson at the end of The Shining walking. Yeah. The <laughs> but they did um, open up a, a movie theater there in my tweens, uh, so I was out there quite a bit to see movies on like the new bigger screens. Oh, love that. Nice. Yeah. Um, so yeah, afterlife was great. They're making a sequel right it's now. Great. Good. I got to get in that shit. I auditioned for, uh, Jason Reitman once. It was for some like political movie and I oh, was yeah, like yeah. instantly bad and was like, sorry, man, <laughs> I like your stuff though. <laughs> and just like, laugh. <laughs> you know, where you're like, yeah, I mean, maybe, maybe this shouldn't have even happened. Right. <laughs> Uh, what um, was it, Abby? What was that movie? We watched it. The Hugh Jackman one? The Runner? Runner? Front, front Runner? Front Runner, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. They filmed that here. Yeah. Um, cool. yeah, the first time we met oh, Jason. Oh, yeah, right? where they make every movie. Where they make every movie. <laughs> the first time we met Jason, I uh, I told him he could be on the show. I told him he could be on the podcast. <laughs> Is the Car- carte blanche. <laughs> Whatever yeah. you want. You can. If you can it works. Do it. Yeah. 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 Out there. Um, but yeah. he did. We'll he, he was really, uh, he told great stories. And like one of the stories he uh, shared with us was about afterlife specifically how yeah. like bill and harold had like this you know it's kind of a known thing they had this like falling out after groundhog day and just right. did not have any kind of relationship and like yeah. how it was a chance for bill to like get some actual closure mm-hmm. through through these characters which is just really interesting and kind of meta and like uh i don't know it's just awesome yeah it's what tied yeah. real emotion into the movie mm-hmm. like to be based off of a real falling out like that to right. have it be right. something that people can come together through is yeah it made yeah, it I real have, i would have loved to have been uh slime on the wall uh 
when yeah. uh, to see Bill Murray watching the movie back. Because when you're making a movie and there's these effects, like on the day, you're kind of like, what is this going to be? Okay, I'm pointing my thing this way. I'm screaming. Right. Wind, wind machines. But then to like see the finished product and how polished and how well they did it. Right. I, I, I assume he lost it. I would I hope so. Yeah. We, um, yeah, I, I think uh, it's so. Bill's always had this weird rap. Like people would always say he doesn't want anything to do with Ghostbusters and stuff. But the thing was like, there's been four Ghostbusters movies. He's been in all of them. So it's just yeah. like, he also <laughs> just look, man, he, a, like they're hard to make like, and, and they made two really good ones out the gate. And then I'm sure that he was reading scripts and being like, this isn't that good. I'm just going to wait until it's really good. That's what I do. I make right. pretty damn good movies. Usually, you know, um, like, so I, what are you going to do? Like make him do a bad movie? Yeah. Yeah. Jake, where are we on larger than life? <laughs> was the last bad. time we saw that? The elephant it, movie. No, Don't it's worry. been way oh. too long since I've seen the elephant movie. Put that in the, in the category. What's the movie where he's operation demo drop. Where he's a clown. <laughs> <laughs> oh, quick change. Oh, it's quick change. So long since I've seen either one of those. Those are probably on the like bottom of my bill. Murray quick change is pretty good. It's a little list. rough, but it's good. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, we, re- we revisit groundhog day all the time. We re- watch. What about Bob all the time? Those are, mm-hmm. those are peak performances. Um, yeah, yeah. I've, I gotta show my kids what about Bob. I feel like that's about time for yeah, that. Yeah, that's my. Number that's a one good favorite. family movie. Like families gravitate towards that movie. That's your like, number one movie. Mine, yeah. Yeah. What about Bob, it just yeah. it's like if I'm having a bad day, that movie makes me feel so understood and yeah. laugh so hard. Um, yeah, it's my favorite performance. I've written like two ripoffs of that movie. That yeah, I've never, never seen the light of day. Like different, what? just like that. That vibe. The, yeah. the same Project like material of like mental health and stuff like that being. Funny, N- less mental health and more like, um, uh, broadly, like, oh, this guy's not normal and hard to vibe with, right? Mm-hmm. In society, so I side with this other guy, but then somewhere along the way, I realize the guy I side with is an asshole who's judgmental, yeah, and this yes. other guy is just living his life in his specific, different way, and we need more of that and less judgment. Yeah. Right. Exactly. And, like, and then as an audience member, you know, this is like writing zero a one, but like as an audience member, you, you, you change sides and you go, Oh yeah, I'm more of like this guy. And I want to learn something with the Richard Drivers character who, yeah. by the way, that technically the act three of that movie is like three pages long. <laughs> like, right. Right. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's just him at the church at the wedding being yeah. like, uh, like that's it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's kind of crazy. Mm-hmm. We we met Richard Dreyfus and at a like a fan convention thing. And, cool. Uh, that, what if that was the end of my story? That was. Yeah. I was like, we met him. Hey, we, trail that's enough. Him. Yeah. I I I talked to him about Bill Murray. I brought it up. I said, "Hey, thanks for putting up with Bill Murray." You were scared like, to. You were scared uh, to bring. Well, because they had like, issues on that movie. It's yeah. like a documented thing, yeah. and like Bill Murray threw an ashtray at him or something. So you mean wouldn't somebody? You have you issues with him? Had issues? Yeah, probably. yeah, I was about to say. You mean another actor had issues with Richard Dreyfus? No, with well, both of them are like. <laughs> I mean, dude, he he was being uh, irritating and annoying. Like that was the character, right? And yep. He went. He went all in. It's like when people talk about. Wasn't there like a documentary about Jim Carrey doing for oh, Man the on Andy the Moon? Kaufman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. And it's like nobody wants to be around that. You were right. great. You were great. But it's Called your the- greatness in that movie Chill. is never going to give back that person who's like two months you ruined, and they right. moved back to Nebraska because they were like, I don't like movie making movies. It sucked. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I always wonder about that with like the method acting people. And it's like certain people, it's just like, okay, if it's Daniel Day Lewis, like, what are you going to do? It's Daniel Day Lewis. But like, no, you, you, see, tell like, him, you tell him, you tell him, dude, nobody cares. You tell him, nobody cares, man. Mm-hmm. You're playing pretend, Daniel. <laughs> I, I guess I look at it this way like, he's great, <laughs> but there's other people who are great too who just clock in and clock out, do their thing. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Do you watch Succession? Are you in the uh, I do. I'm like, I'm behind though. I've watched the first so, two seasons. Uh, that actor. And I know Jim, Homeboy. Yeah, I know Homeboy. Jimmy so. Strong. Yeah, he, he like he's big into his method acting, but the thing is, is like everybody does like an impression of that guy and kind of nails it like yeah. hard. Like, 
Right. And look, I, I, I'm not going to fault. Actors have to do what they got to do to get there. Right. Right. But at what point, and, and now more than ever, we are, um, the, the film business, t- television business is less of an artist's canvas and more of an office place. Right. Yeah. Right. And, yeah. and you, you just don't get to behave certain ways in an office environment. Right. Um, if everyone else can figure out how to do it a different way, I do, I do feel like that type of acting will be, you know, sifted out of, of what we do for better or for worse. I don't know. You know, mm-hmm. like Brian Cox, pretty damn good. Pretty clocks great. in, clocks out. You know? does it. Yeah. Doesn't have to be the guy. It's yeah. interesting. Do you no know. harm? Like, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Hey, or Brian like, Cox. You know, just and and this sucks because as an actor, I do like to play different roles, but I know that like I get hired to be like a a douchey jock guy because that's kind of what it is, right? Like I get cast as that because that's what I am. I I'm sure I could like lose forty pounds and put on an accent and do like a fucking leprechaun or something, yeah, uh, or gain a hundred pounds and do something else. Um, But you know, I don't I don't want to. Uh, well, who cares? Leprechaun reboot canceled. Leprechaun I'm sure I did. Yeah. They got to be making another Leprechaun, right? There's a well. They For did sure. a couple years ago. They recast um, Warwick. We they recast yeah. Warwick, but we had the the new Lyndon Leprechaun Forco on the, the show. Yeah, we had him on the show, Lyndon. Yeah. yeah, yeah. We're like who the number it? one. Um, uh, yeah, leprechaun. podcast Leprechaun. Podcast. Linda, his name is no Lyndon Porco. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay, Porco. right on. I didn't realize that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, well, God damn it. He did good, but Warwick is. I got beat out again. <laughs> Story of my life. He mentioned that. Um, so a couple things. Okay, I wasn't even going to bring this up, but I, I feel like we're, we're at a place where I can. The Intern. You know this movie? You were in it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. First of all, I love this movie. I, it's a it's a great flipping through or YouTube TV. Oh yeah, going. Anne Hathaway, Robert De Niro. It's great. Nancy Myers. Um, she knows what she's doing. If you guys haven't seen it, watch The Intern. Do you realize the logo for this movie is a Ghostbusters name patch? <laughs> <laughs> so, I, literally, yeah. I was walking. Oh. The reason I saw this movie in the first place what? was I was walking through Walmart, saw okay. the DVD, and I was yeah. like, and it caught my eye because I was like, you just know it as a fan. So, I guess I don't even know. Yeah, Jake. that's straight up the Ghostbusters. That is font. the font. it's the black name. That's pack. very interesting. <laughs> yeah, that's so, very Vankman. That's yeah. Yep. And mm-hmm. and I don't know. I, I always I always wondered about this. I was like, I wonder who the graphic designer just the like, Zetamore. Yeah. 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 So, mm-hmm. anyways, that's just a fun fact I wanted to bring up. And it is a great movie, and people should watch it because it's yeah. Awesome. And it technically it, it is in the Ghost Corp uh, universe. <laughs> If you if you pause it, there's a couple of Easter eggs here and there that uh, are leading up to the sequel. I'm just gonna stop. Um, <laughs> yeah. Well, when you said that, I was like thinking like, oh, did like Montecito produce it? Did Ivan produce it or something? But you were just you never it. know. I was just <laughs> talk. I was just talking because I guess that's what I'm supposed to do. Um, but that's awesome. Uh, let's talk about you and your career a little bit like i mentioned earlier workaholics which was like such a phenomenon when it came out it was like yeah we had a good time so well received and has such a cult fan not even a cult fan it's just a huge fan base um the day i was going to message you originally about coming on was Mm -hmm. literally the day you guys announced that the movie wasn't happening and i was Mm -hmm. like they don't want to hear from me (laughs) honors doesn't want to talk to me today hey man life is funny uh you could have reached out and i'd be like yeah what's up how are you right um yeah that was i mean that wasn't the day we found out we found right out right in my, my my dumb like well they found out just now they just no no, no no but yeah so that was a bummer basically we just aren't global enough i mean like you're saying we're more of a cult following i mean we have a following uh we've got a amazing fan base um but yeah the paramount plus people just want to go bigger and uh want to go global Sorry, we can't do that for you. Mm. <laughs> uh, I'm sure you've been asked this a lot. Is there is there a chance to to take it somewhere else? Is that a thing on the table? 
Uh, that window has closed. We've now, uh, cause we did, me and the guys got paid for, uh, our part of the movie that will never be made. So like the rest of it went to like a tax write off or something like that. Oh, it got a background. Yeah. So they were like, yeah, they were like, we, you can look for another home for the movie even for you have three weeks. And we're like, oh, cool. Yeah. Totally. So many people will jump on it in three weeks. <laughs> um, but you know, it, it also, if you're Netflix, are you going to be like, yeah, I'll pay a bunch of money to have a movie for two years before it reverts back to Paramount Plus for Infinity? Like, that's right. just, it's not that's good like, business. Yeah. yeah. Um, well, that was a bummer. And I, I know that, that I was yeah. bummed and the yeah. fans were bummed. But you've got some yeah. amazing stuff going on. We've I can't be stopped. You can't no, be stopped. No, you certainly can. No. Unstoppable. <laughs> um Muppets. I'm a man. <laughs> um, I'm like, <laughs> should I just start desired. interjecting like little right. yeah, no, no. Hey, I'm saying. Yeah, uh, we, I we have start plenty, speaking in Ghostbusters. Quotes. Well, we have a lot of friends who do that, and it's yeah. fine. We do it from time to time. Yeah. It, it can be the the those movies are extremely quotable. Yeah, uh, uh, but yeah, I've been, I've I've been lucky enough to kind of um, bounce back and uh, got some stuff popping off. Yeah, yeah, we we watched the first two episodes of uh, Muppets today. Uh, you popped up. You got to watch two before. to see me. I'm not in the first one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um. Hey, it's great. I Thanks, fucking man. love the show. Where, where are you like, in Muppets going into this? Is this like dream come true? Or are you? Oh you, yeah. 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 I mean, I was. Uh, Huge like Jim Henson. Uh, so this, what you we were talking about earlier as far as like Star Wars. No, I was like Labyrinth and Dark Crystal oh, yeah. yes. Uh, yes, to the yes. core, Okay, you know, um, and love the Muppet movies and that stuff. But more was into the fantasy stuff. Um, and so, yeah, to be and, and, and Muppet Babies. Yeah, like course, I'm a yeah. Muppet Babies guy. And I, I know that that's kind of like. It's hard for some people to understand, but we're it we're is, all it is pro. Mu- yeah, we're all pro Muppet true. babies here. Exactly. Yeah. Um. So, but being on set and like acting with Muppets is surreal, and uh, yeah, it's just a total like, you know, bucket list box mm. check big time. Right. I mean, we've got the um. There's a Center for Puppetry Arts is a museum in Atlanta that. Mm-hmm has a this really incredible Jim Henson display and just like mm-hmm. seeing actual Muppets in person yeah. is is right. a wild they've got a lot of shit from labyrinth it's really cool oh yeah they yeah. got to, it's a it's a if you're ever in town making one of those movies yeah. you gotta go to the puppetry arts oh I, I will I would they came they were they had some display out here at a museum and I was there for like Father's Day weekend and took a picture with like a gelfling and was like yeah nothing like being a father and like had my arm out <laughs> <laughs> yeah, around the Gelfling child. <laughs> oh. So, is that was that the museum where they got Bru- they had they have a Gelfling at uh, that museum we went to with Bruce with the shark the jaw shark was it that one? Oh, the academy yeah, yeah. the academy, the academy? It, no they this got is some before. there this was like okay. two or th- this is uh, fuck this is pre pandemic gotcha. um, so this was a thing that they had set up at the Skirball which is a fun word to say mm-hmm. yeah. yeah everyone oh. can try it. Mm-hmm. The skirball. Well, let's is, pause man. for the people driving so they can try it. Go ahead and say it. Roll, <laughs> roll down your windows. Shout it out loud. <laughs> Yell it at a passenger <laughs> yeah. or, or a, a, another driver. Um, and then, so you probably don't know this, but we have a, a, a side project, side show, another podcast called YHS and Monster Island that Jacob hosts. That's yeah. all Godzilla and Kaiju. All Kaiju. Yeah. And I know you, you probably. You guys. <laughs> <laughs> Spoiler. Let's hear it. <laughs> uh, can you can you say anything? Yeah, I can say all sorts of stuff. I think um, I can say that I'm in a Godzilla show that has yet to be named. I believe. Okay. Uh, for Apple TV Plus, that comes out later this year. I think October, or November, but don't quote me. Um, yeah, I'm homies with Godzilla now. That's amazing. That yeah, is the dream. It's, so it's a cool, cool show. It's it's got two timelines. Um, one is essentially modern day times, okay. where we're, and we're living in like a Godzilla monsters era. Right. And then my timeline um, takes place in the early fifties when uh, we're post post World War Two, post um, uh, uh, like atom bombs dropping and discovering like something's going on out there and we're trying to figure it all out. Uh, and these two stories are kind of weaving together. 
And I don't know if I can say who's in it or who's not, but it's a fucking sick cast. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I don't know what's public or not. Let me click on the the thing here. And yeah, I'll let there's you not, guys. There's do not that. a lot. There's not a lot public. Um, I've heard zero of the information you just <laughs> you okay. just uh, came. So. Well, maybe um, I'm gonna get a phone call. <laughs> oh, wait, hold on, hold That's on. Right. There, Elizabeth. There's I remember some reading of about. There's this. probably some of that out there. Kurt mm-hmm. Russell's in it. Kurt Russell. Yeah, Fuck. knew that. Yeah. Okay. Dude, He's my yeah. guy. He's back. I got my hateful eight poster back. Today. I see. I saw. I saw <laughs> that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but there's a cool. There's a cool thing about Kurt and his character that I don't know. If, I mean, I, it might be out there, but I, I don't know if I can say. Um, but like, it's going to be a cool show and like fully big budget, like up there with the movies kind of thing. And it will it will intertwine with uh, those current monster movies. Yeah. Okay. That's the tit- awesome. tit- Titan verse. I don't know what we're calling it. Jake, what do we call it? It's the monster verse. Monster verse. Yeah. Yeah. The yeah. legendary monster verse. Right? Yeah, yeah. 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 That's awesome. It's a weird. Yeah. It's a weird. Uh, it's a weird thing for like someone I, I'm, I've been a Godzilla fan my entire life and I've talked mm-hmm. to them about it. Like when you're a kid and you mm-hmm. don't know anybody else who's into Godzilla, it feels like, you're maybe a little crazy and making things up because you're like, right. nobody knows who Godzilla is, but me. And now it's like, he's everywhere. He's everywhere. So this is a dream everywhere. come true. Having a TV show and all these movies and the Kong movies. It's great. So I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm, I think you'll dig it. Like where the movies are kind of more spectacle and action. Uh, this has that, but then also because it's a TV show, it can really like layer things in with stories and mystery and that kind of stuff. It's yeah. pretty rad. Yeah. Um, have you, are you on Criterion watching all those uh, original, like all the throwback Godzillas and stuff? Oh yeah. There? I've seen, I've seen all that. Yeah. yeah. All, all that stuff. I grew up watching Godzilla. I've, yeah. I've seen every bit and anything Godzilla that's out there. I've, I've yeah. seen it. So I was watching the original the other night yeah. and uh, it's amazing what they, what they created with sound of yeah. just the like, yeah. of like the footprints like you and like feel it. right and like everyone's hopping to and like getting to like you know all the soldiers are gathering and all this stuff yeah and they don't need to show godzilla because you're just hearing the footsteps and you know shit is hitting the fan yeah and it's just such a smart way to um you know build the um uh, the stakes and and not have to rely on like giant whatever like yeah. Yeah. Uh, stuff you animals. show the show yeah. the uh, you footprints. You know, you see his footprints first. Yeah, you know, it's incredible. You see that filmmaking. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's like the I think that movie came out in like 1954 or mm-hmm. something. 54. Yeah, the, the first one was 54. And sad. Yeah. Abby mm-hmm. and Jake are about to like. Th- this is where they're going to start roasting me because I don't really watch those movies and and they start that's, talking that's about okay. it. And then I don't chime in. And then they they're like, look at this fucking guy over here. Doesn't matter. Yeah. Talking about. It. Yeah, so, it's all right. <laughs> We've um, tried to we've tried to make Craig watch a few, and and I can I understand that some of those. I mean, movies I've seen are, all the modern. Some of those movies are hard to sit through. Um, yeah, but yeah, you gotta yeah, work your way backwards. Sure. Work your way right. backwards. Yeah. Go from fastest, craziest to slower, slower, slower. But yeah, there's some there's some gold. I mean, I don't know about you guys, but like it was just what they played on. Like, if you didn't have cable, Godzilla was they played on like Sunday mornings on like the last channel. It was like yeah. Samurai Sunday. And then yeah. after that, they play Godzilla. Yeah. 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 That stuff was always on. TNT also, used to play it a lot. <laughs> yep. Well, yeah. Mm-hmm. Somebody got cable. Somebody uh, got that <laughs> cable. Oh, Somebody got that basic. Damn. Cable. You better go watch <laughs> The Intern next time you flip it through. God damn. That's, right. That's right. Um, And then, hey, you have a movie out right now, right? Or is it coming out this weekend? Yes. Yeah. It comes out um, on the 26th of May. It's called About My Father. It's with Robert De Niro again of intern fame i don't know what other movies he's done um <laughs> he, well, he did something uh he did. did he i don't he seems, he seems pretty green on green. set <laughs> um yeah so it's sebastian maniscalco uh yeah. it's based on his relationship with his dad de niro plays the dad they're like italian guys from chicago dad's first generation from sicily uh sicily sicily um and then he falls, Sebastian falls for this like super waspy honky girl who he wants to propose to. And the dad wants to meet the family before all this goes down. And uh, he comes and meets the family. And I play like the soon to be brother-in-law, like douchebag crypto, like yeah. golf, golf guy. 
right? Love it. And uh, a lot of fun. A lot of fun to play that guy. We saw the trailer. What did we just see? Was it in front of... It wasn't Guardians. Whatever the last movie we saw before Guardians of the Galaxy. We saw the trailer. Mm -hmm. Has some good laughs in it. I yeah, see yeah. It. It's okay. funny. It's a funny movie. You know, uh, it's also like a good, wholesome... Because it's a rom-com, but it's not about a guy like trying to win the girl back kind of thing. Right. Or a girl trying to win the guy back. It's a guy trying not to fuck things up with the girl and losing the dad and having to win the dad back. So like right. that that act three like run after is for the dad, you know, and like they say all the things that they never said. And it's, okay. uh, it's pretty, it's pretty good. Where are we? Um, as we wrap up here, uh, let's just ask the small questions. What is the future of comedy, especially on film? <laughs> I'd like to know. Cause I, 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 we, Jake, we were talking about this on the phone yesterday. Like, mm -hmm. Oh, because we were talking about. Wait, are you are you about to bring up the fact that we were we had a, an hour conversation about the scary movie franchise and how weird those movies are and how they don't movies no. like that don't exist? Is that what you're about to go? I for no. some reason thought you were about to go into the scary. Why, why were we even talking? Okay, about well, that? sir, well, we could talk about scary movie, but in general, <laughs> big box office, everybody's got to <clears> go <throat> see it. Funny comedies, they don't. They're not happening in movie theaters. They're happening yeah. on streaming. So stuff here. Like as someone who writes comedy every day and then deletes it, uh, <laughs> my assessment is that comedy is, and, and I might use the wrong word for this, but comedy is based on kind of a power structure. Okay. And in the United States for a long time, we've kind of known what the power structure was, right. And who we can laugh at and who gets to be the butt of the joke. And as things shift, the butts of the joke are tired of being laughed at. Right. And the people who are in positions of power or looking are at the top end of the hierarchy are very uncomfortable with their power now. Mm -hmm. um, and so, and with the internet and everything, access to emotions and people's feelings is at an all time high. So when you make a certain joke about a certain type of person or a person a certain type of behavior, you're going to get thousands of people who are like, Hey, fuck you. That's me every day. Yeah. That's my struggle. Right. And yeah. so then you go, ah, I feel icky. And so the one thing that we have left is like self deprecation yep. where I give you permission to laugh at how small my penis is. Mm -hmm. Right. 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 Yeah. Wait, what? <laughs> um, you know what I'm saying? So like we, we, we can laugh at self-deprecation because it's just one guy saying yeah. this is what's fucked up about me. Right. And, yeah. and everyone else gets to go, Oh my God, he's got it so bad, but he knows yeah. it. So it's okay. <laughs> right. right. He's and, the one who yeah. said, <clears throat> right. And, uh, and then there's also just silly, which is just insanity, goofiness and the power thing that I, this is like my, whatever my theory is that to be goofy in society is not like productive or helpful or like going to gain you anything, right? If anything, you get ostracized for being different and weird and strange and out there. Right. So you laugh at that because you're like, God, I'm glad that's not me. I'd be embarrassed and ostracized and right. cast right. out. But these people with the competence to be like, no, I'm going to be insane. It doesn't bother me if I'm yeah. cast aside or if I'm less than you know, a lot of people don't want to be looked at as less than like, it's uncomfortable. Right. Yeah. yeah. Some people are daring to do that. Um, but you know, the jokes of like, like punching up, but then it's like, now what's punching up? Who's up? Who's down? It's hard yeah. to know. Right. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Sure. Um, I, that's so, that's, real, yeah. so, so if you can negotiate, if you can negate, negavigate, if you can navigate and negotiate, which also means negavigate, Mm -hmm. all those things I mean, that's whole that is a then a you're word. good to go we need, but you don't need to laugh about that but who wants to uh dump 10 million dollars into something that might piss off anybody it's just not yeah you know right. when, when it, you can just do a scary movie and you win mm -hmm. it's right cheaper it's everyone's scared of a fucking crazy naked grandma running around underneath your airbnb yeah right? Yeah, that movie was I know. That's, I am. that's oh, scary. Yeah. That was mm -hmm. scary. That was nope. fucking scary. 
There, there's nobody going, actually, that's me. That's my life. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, hey, you're not offending uh, anybody. <laughs> hey, here's some, this is complete. Well, it's kind of related, but not really to the important mm-hmm. conversation we were just having. We were at an event and the dude who played the monster in Barbarian was mm-hmm. there. Mm-hmm. And we saw a woman just walk up to him and go, Hey, I didn't like that movie and just walked Ooh. away. And I was like, what is wrong with Why? him? Why? even know it was him. Was he wearing like a Well, he had a big banner that picture. said, take a picture with me. Oh, this is at the thing. Yeah, that it was, was like, at a yeah, convention. Yeah. yeah, it was like a yeah, yeah, okay. got it, got um, got So it. fuck that person. I thought you were at like a fucking 7-Eleven. You're like, that's the guy. That's the guy, dude. <laughs> um, that's a really astute. And, so and that that is what I, what I, when I try and sit down and write something, I just go, how many people is this going to piss off? Right, and then, about, and then yeah, so yeah. so there's the people who go, uh, I'm okay with being silly and laughed at and like ridiculed because I'm comfortable with myself. And then there's other people who are like, I'm okay shitting on people because people should be okay to get shit on. It's right. fine. You should be able to take a joke. Right. But then you if know? you say like, and I'm 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 not a. a it's delicate. You know, it is delicate, yeah. but the people who are like really loud about saying people need to just be, learn how to take a joke, like they are immediately labeled as like. Oh, I bet you like when kids get killed. It's like, what? It's just like, I bet you're a <laughs> huge piece of shit. It's just like, I mean, that can be funny. <laughs> I mean, like yeah. anything can and will be fun. But I think about right. like my favorite comedies of all time. Like, like I was 10 years old when Dumb and Dumber came out. I, it's, to right. me, it's the funniest movie of all time. But like, if you right. watch that movie, they're punching each other the whole time. But there's no real like nobody watches that movie and is like that like that movie is a movie that transcends some of the, some of that thought. It's not mean spirited, yeah. It mm-hmm. is, right, especially not towards like any one type of person or yeah. Fairly pretend. Brothers were pretty good at that, and also just like including actors um, with disabilities and that sort of thing. Right, right. Um, it's like a consciousness of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's interesting because they also toe the line where they're like. Those actors who I just remember like in, was it me, myself and Irene? There's a guy who just like walks on his hands and he's like putting, cause he has no legs. Yeah. He's putting yeah. gloves on before he goes in the gas station bathroom. Yeah. And yeah. and so like they, they're taking the piss out of themselves and other people are making jokes at their expense. And it's like, they kind of like being treated normal or like not having kid gloves on around yeah. them. They're like, yeah. Obviously, I got to put gloves on before I go into a fucking gas station bathroom. <laughs> right, right. Like, <laughs> you know, if, I, if, yeah. But then they had the character who was pretending to be like the doctor with the crazy. Um, oh, from with the. Some, uh, there's something about Mary. So from yeah. something about Mary with like the crutches, and yeah, it's like yeah. you can't get the keys. Yeah. And it's one of the funniest things you've ever seen in your life. Right, like, right. The first time you see that, but right. then now I'm sure it's like. I wonder what's wrong with that guy. Is he going to be okay? Like right. mm-hmm. you, the, the empathy meter Look at it in a different the, way, the yeah. voices of people who go, Hey, my life is pretty hard. Like that has been, just been um, amplified in such a way that it's, it's, it's hard to go through life and be like, man, I had a great day period. End of sentence. You need to be like, man, I had a great day how lucky am I? I need to be like thankful and gracious be, about this. Right. Right. And I think that some people are like, I don't want to fucking do that every day. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, I fucking, I do laugh. we have to, do we have to do that, do that every day? Maybe. I think it works for some people and not for others. I also think like, and this is like, not, this is a, um, not an original thought, but like things are cyclical and it will move back towards the other direction at some point. It's, it won't be the same, <clears throat> right? Like it, it can't yeah. be almost like it, just the way. Well, so yeah, for example, I went on uh, to a party the other night. Whitney Cummings had a roast of her, of herself. She did one for Burt Kreischer. She had one for herself and they're going to air it on only fans. Right. Okay. Mm-hmm. Because everything they said cannot be aired anywhere. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. Nobody wants to deal with it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But like, you know what, if you want to pay, I don't know what it is to watch a bunch of funny people roast the shit out of Whitney Cummings because you hate her, this is the place to do it. It'll be available, you know? right? It'll be, it's available. And it'll yeah. be like, it's a, hey, if you want it, it lives here. And OnlyFans is a place where they let a lot of shit fly. Yeah. And so true. like they don't have to worry about like Colgate toothpaste commercials getting pulled. Right. Um, right. And I think though, it's like, 
in our lifetime. Like we've seen it. It's been like a dramatic shift because it wasn't that long ago that like mm-hmm. the roast of whoever was just on Comedy Central. Right. And like, but they aren't going to do that anymore, even though that was their fucking cash. Yeah, cash, that's where yeah. They, they would pay. They would pay those people tens of millions of dollars to be on there, right? Because Ooh. it was huge. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. What was the cl- the the Norm Macdonald one when he roast Bob Saget and he and he just bombs he on bombs. Yeah. It's the yeah. Fucking so greatest. Good. The greatest Amazing. of all time. Yeah. Um, you, you've heard of, you know, Norm. You've heard of Norm. Yeah. So. I met Norm a couple of times. He was always super duper nice and uh, tall. Yeah. That's what ever, I mean, I, he just seemed like the best guy ever. Yeah. It sucks. It sucks. He's gone. Let's end it on a high note. Sucks. Yeah. Norm McDonald died. <laughs> yeah. Oh. RIP. Talk about death for a little bit. Well, yeah. you know what? We can, I just realized this like two minutes ago and I never brought it up uh, earlier, but William Atherton. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I was going to bring this up. Played my father on Workaholics. Yes. Yeah. And, and uh, that's like a famous episode, mm-hmm. too. Oh, then fucking sick. Yeah, great. Yeah. Good. It is. <laughs> but like, dude, he is, I liked him a lot. He was very cool. Um, like, you know, was willing to play ball. We, we did a part where I think, I don't know if we cut it or didn't, but uh, he was like, hey, can I see your garage? And I was like, don't you want to say the magic word or whatever? Like, oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. And he's like, can I please see your girl? <laughs> That's, great. That's awesome. And I don't know. I can't remember if we cut it or left it in there, but he was an open book about that. Die hard. Um, like this dude was two of the like least likable characters of the eighties. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And just dined out on that forever. A biodome. I mean, yeah. Fuck. And he's also like, I think he was like a, like Shakespearean trained actor. Like he's like a legit. Yeah. Well, like, dude, he's in, um, what is it? Spielberg's Sugarland Express. Oh shit. Right. And he's like a country mm. guy. And you're like, holy shit. <laughs> Handsome, you know, kind of like yeah. rugged, like a kind like a, not like a young Kevin Bacon, Kevin, Kevin Bacon's a more beautiful guy. Um, right. but like he was just had this young, like fucking thin, big belt buckle, like, might kick your ass in a bar fight, but just like a desperation in the That's eyes. Amazing. Like, yeah, he's he's good in that. Um, awesome. but he's so cool and just like, uh, a very what's the word? He's just kind of like a manic, not manicured, not like um physically manicured, but just like mannered. Yeah, he's a, he's yeah. a mannered guy. We like we knows have, good wines and stuff. That kind okay, of thing. so yeah, he's like one of the. You know when you meet somebody and you're immediately like, God, this guy knows stuff. He yeah, knows yeah, stuff yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's how I felt. Like when I met you know, we, yeah. This guy's I actually feel, yeah, this guy's got he knows like what fork goes he's where. Think, yeah, he's right. thinking yeah. about something right now. <laughs> yeah, you know? yeah, yeah, yeah. I can he's tell. got something going on in there. He's the guy who's like not that I'm quoting him, and I, I hope if he ever hears this, he's not like, What the fuck are you talking about? But the, like if you have three bu- three buttons on your jacket, he's the guy who's like Always, sometimes, never. Right? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. The, like, like, right. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Like me, I'm like the lowest version of that. I'm like holding two socks that are clearly not the same, and I'm like, I think sometimes are these, are these this <laughs> Yeah. Anyway, these are for feet, right? Right. What do I do with these? <laughs> yeah. Um. But that's that's because we're podcasters. It's yeah. just like the lowest form of human being. I don't um, want to say it, but yeah. <laughs> it's true. Um. So. I had one more thing I was going to, Oh, this is what I'm going to bring up. Last thing. Where are you on uh, w- one, one of the big parts of uh, what we do is uh, as you can see with the backgrounds and stuff is we're collectors, mm-hmm. we're memorabilia people, we're toy and action figure people. Right. Uh, do you have anything in your life that, and, you- and podcasters? Jesus. <laughs> can you believe it? <laughs> yeah. Uh, Oof. Yeah, it's cool though because like our parents are like totally cool with us still living. So proud, so yeah. proud. Yeah, they're fucking Whoa. so proud. Of us. Yeah. <laughs> Be quiet! <laughs> I told you that this microphone was gonna pick your shit up. Uh, it's not it, omnidirectional. He's down there <laughs> podcasting again. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, voice. Collecting question: What do I collect? Uh, just do. Do you have any? Do you have like a, a hobby or or a, a, are you like some people are like shoe guys? Some yeah, I have a like, lot of New Balance shoes. You're like a New Balance guy. Nice. That's like your yeah. thing. Yeah. Do you keep them in like glass cases or just like in a closet? Uh, they're in a cl- they're in like a, a a walk-in closet situation. Nice. <laughs> it's, my wife is like, no, stop. This is <laughs> this is <laughs> this is disgusting. Yeah. This has to stop. But gotcha. Yeah, uh, that's what I do. That's my thing. What else do gotcha. I collect? Uh, it seems like I collect children at this point. Children. Uh, yeah, you got three kids. That's kind of wild. Nice. Um, Congratulations. What else do I collect? I think should we be congratulating it. people on that? 
on kids? Why not? Oh. Well, because they're like breathing your air, asshole. Uh, no. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I mean, is there like a period of time? Like, once you have a kid, you congratulate. But if you see somebody with like an eight year old, you have to like, hey, I think, look at that. Uh, yeah, for sure that. But like, I think after two kids, you don't even have to congratulate them on like any newborn. Okay. Mm. Like, you done. Three, you three is, I don't know what we're doing. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. I met somebody the other day who has six. Why? And he said it like pridefully. And I was like, you're crazy. You should have um, more kids than like an animal would have. That's right. like, yeah, that's a litter. <laughs> right. So. That happens at once though. You know that, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah I, I know how <laughs> mammals know how and animals work. Humans yeah. and puppies and yeah, those come. Yeah. Well, sometimes yeah. there's eggs involved. Yeah. Yeah. Right. yeah. I mean, I get it, but it's just like, not always, yeah. though. Right? It it's is. not always yeah. at once. Okay. He's like, um, Wikipedia. Hey. Uh, it's a survival <laughs> yeah. rate yeah, that, that goes yeah. with, with that. Yeah. So. No, but thanks awesome. for having me on, guys. I, I, I know that like uh, you reached out a while back, and uh, oh, fine, I've been running it. around with Godzilla, Jacob. Pretty special. Oh. Uh, <laughs> I, I hope you dig Jealous. it. I hope you love the show. Um, and I uh, I can't I'm glad wait. we finally uh, circled the wagons. Yeah, this was great. Yeah. We appreciate it. Uh, it's cool. Uh, like, kind of like I said earlier, like everybody likes Ghostbusters, but sometimes there's like a, a deeper appreciation we want to tap into. I, we we didn't even ask the main question, which who's your favorite? But I'm guessing it's Egon, right? Because you you said it's and no, it's it's Rick Moranis for sure. That's why oh, yes well, yes yeah. have some. I was like yeah, obviously Mr. Tully. Yeah. yeah. Whoa. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Um. Cool. And like the like the backstory that it was like john candy originally and then yep, he couldn't right. do it and like then rick stepped in and like truly steals the movie and then even yeah. in part two he's amazing fucking rick moranis unbelievable <laughs> mm -hmm. um i was tweeting about this the other day disney plus like during the pandemic they had like announced uh rick moranis was doing a honey i shrunk the kids legacy sequel and then just mm -hmm. no new i was like you can't just announce just disappeared that yeah and not you can't blue ball us on who did this Disney Plus. Can yeah, you write them a letter? They, this is this they do this so that you go, I better get it now. <laughs> yeah. sign up now. Yeah, this is what they did with the Workaholics movie. They paid us a ton of money just to say we're gonna have a Workaholics movie on right. Paramount Plus, and then now mm -hmm. they're not. Yeah. So very expensive advertisement for them, but whatever. Mm -hmm. Um, but no, this has been very fun. Uh yeah, man. Well, uh, I just we, we just we didn't even talk about Ghostbusters, but yeah, we barely scratched the surface. I mean, I mean, you know, we we sometimes do a segment called a fuck budget where we give you five topics and you have to assign how many fucks you give about them. But maybe next time, maybe five years down the road, we'll talk next about it. Hey, when I, when I, when Godzilla comes out, maybe I'll come back on. And, yeah. Uh, I was going to oh, say yeah. that would be perfect. You know, yeah. I gotta, I gotta get new shirts though. I gotta get Godzilla. Gotta get a Godzilla. Shirt. Oh yeah. You can probably do that. Godzilla hat. Yeah. They need uh, those. You yeah. can get a Godzilla hat. They probably gave yeah. you some, some merch. Some cool no. Merch. And it was for yeah. Apple. I was like any day now, there's going to be a new laptop or an iPad or those fucking $800 headphones in my trailer. Just wait for me. It's like, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Nothing. Yeah. nothing. Yeah. nothing. Yeah. But that's okay. Yeah. Um, but at least they're making the show. At least it's yeah, this is true. It's happening. Oh my god. Um, yeah, we'll we'll talk more about Ghostbusters and we'll we'll be looking forward to uh, a new movie. They're filming it right now in London. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh we'll uh we'll we'll catch up down the road, man. Uh anything else that you need to plug or tell people uh, plug your podcast at least. Yeah, my I'm podcast. My manager's always like, When you go on a podcast, plug your podcast. I go, I will, dude, and then I never do. <laughs> so Here yeah, I I do a podcast with Blake Anderson, Adam Devine, Kyle Newichek. It's called This Is Important. We cover the most important issues of every day. You do. Um, and uh, it's really, truly just an hour of four add out dudes with no brain cells talking about stuff. I love it. That's, yeah. that's all it. I'm here yeah. for it. Perfect. Yeah. That's it. Um, well, that's it. Hey guys, yeah. seven years. How do you end one of these things? What do you say? That's the end of the show. What? what how does he that? end? How yeah. does? How does? Um, how does Peter Venkman end? What is it? World of the Strange. World, World of the Psychic. psychic. World, World of the, of the psychic. psychic. And he's like, and he just does this. Yeah. And yeah, all, yeah. But he goes, but he goes like, da -da -da, and it's always. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then he yeah. gives a little laugh. Yeah. yeah. You know, we had Kurt Fuller on the show too, years ago. Oh yeah, I listened to that episode. He seemed like he was a good time. He's good. good. Yeah. yeah. Fun it guy. was before we figured out how to like get microphones that worked and stuff. So it probably sounds yeah. like shit, but it's fine. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, thank you for listening. We're yeah. trying. Yeah. Thanks for listening. Yeah. We love him. <laughs> He's great. He's a funny guy. 
to also again another guy to like as far as sequels go to step into Atherton's shoes, the face yeah. of Smarm in the eighties. Yeah, and to kill it. Yeah, he's awesome. He's also uh, awesome in in Wayne's World. He tried to put in Wayne's that World um, yeah. the pilot of uh, News Radio. Oh, and scary movie, Jake. There we go. Yeah, the dude. The dude's back. funny. God, he's funny. Yeah. Um, but yeah. Cool. All right, man. Ha- hairless cats. Weird. Weird. There it is. All right. We're done. Bye-bye. <laughs>